were the carefree days. Planes took off and landed in any paddock they could get fertilizer trucks to. In 1949 they started loading by hand, but these pioneering days soon passed. Machines were developed to load the planes because farmers were crying out to have their farms dusted with superphosphate and lime. The hills and high country were carrying more stock and grass was growing where it never had before. A new industry was booming. There were plenty of ex-Air Force types busting to have a go. became more powerful, the loads heavier, work plentiful. New companies started up and down the country, but experienced top dressing pilots were becoming scarce. First, aero clubs offered advanced training for new pilots keen to join the aerial farmers. Then, to meet the growing demand, a special agricultural pilot school got underway at Whanganui in 1963, the government, the company and pupil each paying a third of the cost of training. Pitching movement about the lateral axis, a yawing movement about the vertical axis, rolling movement about the longitudinal axis. Now likewise, we speak To about enter this school, the pilot must hold his commercial flying license. The course covers theory and practical flying. The pupil pilot studies dropping rates for spreading fertilizers and spraying techniques to get a chemical rating. The airstrip, power lines in the way and the direction of the wind. Now the first thing in deciding how you get your aircraft and when it's sowing, the opening is about that much for a 100 weight to the acre. For two to three, it's open to about that far and for jettison, the whole door is open and thus allows the material to go out in a hurry. Well, is there any change when you jettison them? Considerable. When you first drop the load, the nose rises, and then after the load goes out, or as it goes out, the nose drops down again. You come into this position here, pause at the harbour, and then hover up here at five feet at fast walking speed. Then rotate the helicopter 360 degrees. Helicopter pilots are trained by a company next door. Fly sideways to this point. Pull, rotate again 360 degrees and follow on backwards. Airstrips on hilltops are necessarily restrictive. So on the flat safety of the airport, one's marked out which approximates the size of those on farms. Bravo Uniform Golf, takeoff clearance, over. Bravo Uniform Golf's cleared for takeoff. With the hopper full of sand, they practice takeoffs and landings, get the reaction after jettison. In these trials, a pilot gains confidence in handling a sluggish aircraft and the disconcerting time lag for twisting, turning manoeuvres in the rugged backcountry. Bravo Uniform Golf, takeoff clearance, over. Bravo Uniform Golf's cleared for takeoff. A great deal of the training is given in steep hill country where 60 degree slopes and 1,000 foot hill faces are common. New Zealand's generally high and rugged and much of the top dressing is done in this type of country. of airstrip vary. Some follow the ridges with one to four gradients, while others are dead flat in the valleys. Wherever they land, an overshoot means disaster. Good morning, Mr. 
morning, Mr. Lawrence. It's quite a pleasant morning, isn't it? It is indeed. I'd like you to meet Paul Beard, our other oh, pilot. Right. Yes, it's a great day for dog yes, racing. Yes, great day. Now, what about your job? I want you to sow this space over here to follow from the road, right up that face, follow the boundary fence, and up to the gorse. Farmers around Whanganui cooperate by providing work for the school, which spreads fertiliser for them at a reduced charge, because the pupil pilot naturally takes longer to do the job. Most top dressing companies like to start their new pilots as loader drivers for a year before they go on to school. The driver and pilot get an appreciation of each other's work and ground turnarounds are faster. those trees straight down there and that'll be one run. When working, the pilots sort out landmarks on the hills around them before they make their spreading runs on the ridges and faces. Loads increase gradually. By the time the 50 hours flying course is completed, the hoppers are full. The early successful attempt in getting fertilizer onto inaccessible rugged country not only increased the carrying capacity of the land, but has also stabilized country threatened with erosion. Now 44 companies operating in New Zealand. Their planes fly from over 12,000 farm airstrips and this year will drop a million tons of fertilizer onto our farmland as well as seeds, sprays and weed killers. Three quarters of New Zealand is hilly and mountainous, and before aerial top dressing, mainly unproductive. Poor country has become profitable, and it's estimated that 12 million sheep and a million beef cattle today graze on grass sown and kept green by aircraft. With the requisite number of hours behind him, the graduate from the school rejoins his company, which has paid part of the cost of his training. Zealand's agricultural flying industry has given new meaning to Aotearoa, the long white cloud.